Hey guys, welcome back. Frosty Gaming here to give you another Unity tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about something I really find pretty cool. It's called prefabs. Now before I get into the details of what a prefab is, I'm going to kind of explain why you would want to use it. Earlier in our material video, we added a cube and then put this wood material on it so it looks kind of like a box. So we've got our box, but we've only got one, you know, and we, we want a lot of boxes in our game. We can control D to duplicate it, and control D to duplicate that, control D to duplicate that, you know. So now we've got a bunch of boxes. Oh, but uh, I kind of want to make them bigger, right? Well, then we have to go through each one and make them bigger. And if we want them the same size, then we're going to have to figure out the, the whole scale, the scale that we want them exactly, and then fill that out. And it's really a lot of work, just really annoying to have to edit each one, even though it's the same thing and you want it all to happen to that same thing. So we can create what's called a prefab. So if we go ahead and get rid of all of these, we can go down here. And usually I create a folder for prefabs. And then we can go to create prefab, and we'll call this box. Now what we can do that's really cool is we can move this this object which we have here into the box and then we bring it out here and we've got the box we can bring out another one we've got another box bring out another one bring and we've got a bunch of boxes now right it's pretty cool but how can we edit them all simultaneously we've got to make it so that editing one will edit all the others so we can actually go to the prefab, click scale, scale it up. Uh, say we want it that big. You know what? We, we kind of want it to be like a uh, rectangle-ish, right? And then if we look up here, since it's a prefab, it has this setting to revert back. If I do that, it reverts back to the original prefab. I can select the current prefab that I'm on. Or I can apply. And when I apply, it changes all the other instances of this prefab to match what I just did with this. So again, I can change it, apply, and it changes all the others. And now we've got a bunch of falling boxes, which is so exciting, right? <laughs> but it's really nice to use prefabs for things that you're going to have multiple instances of, but you don't want to have to edit each one individually. So if you want to put a script on all of them to do something, then you can just make a prefab, have them all be prefabs, and then put that script on them, on the prefab, and apply it, and it will activate for everyone, or a material, or a size, rotation, any of that stuff, and you can apply it once you do it to one of them, and it's really nice. I usually use it for instantiation, which is something I'm going to be going over in a much later video. It's more of an advanced technique, but it's where you create the object during the runtime of the game. So like when my game starts, I would randomly generate and instantiate a dungeon layout so that it would be different every time. And prefabs allow you to do some really cool things like that. Alright guys, I think that's about it for prefabs. Today we talked about what prefabs were, we created one, we manipulated them, we also saw what the select, revert, and apply options do with a prefab, and hopefully you'll be able to use this for some of your games, make life easier on yourself. I know that this has made life a lot easier on me when I've been developing games. Alright, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.